Hi. So here I am at Sao Paulo Zoo uh, with our special guest, uh, Linus Torvalds. Um, so I'm going to ask him some questions. So hi, Linus. Um, here we are in Sao Paulo at the zoo. Um, what do you think of the zoo? It's been good. It's been kind of slow. It's not as active as I was hoping for, though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a fun zoo. <laughs> so, everybody asks you questions about world peace and Linux domination and crap yes. like that. I'm interested in your Sinclair QL. You used to have a British Sinclair QL when you were younger. <laughs> that is so correct. So what, what did you do with it? Um... It was another of those machines where I had the machine and I had no software because all the software was off in Britain. You couldn't buy anything in Finland. So I bought one piece of software, which was the assembler. Oh, the Metacomco microassembler, the 68,000 more. Actually, now that I think about it, I had to write my own assembler because... Uh, What did you write it in? You basic? I have this distinct memory of me writing my own assembler and my own editor and writing it not in QBasic because if you wrote it in QBasic you couldn't actually put them on an EEPROM. No, they would go on Microsoft. Because the the, the basics had to be in in RAM and uh, so I wrote my own exactly because that way I could flash them onto an EEPROM. And I'd have them there, and they would actually run much faster, because anything you ran out of regular RAM uh, had to fight the CPU for screen refresh bandwidth and stuff like that. So RAM was really, really slow, and that was really annoying. So you'd actually get better performance by running your programs directly out of the ROMs, which is wrong. That's yeah, not yeah, how it's yeah. supposed to work, but yeah. that's, that's my distinct memory. Plus, <coughs> that meant that you save saved a lot of RAM, you can have to you can run it directly out of So I had this horrible kludgy thing where I had a the QL came with 128k of RAM if I yeah, correct. And then it had the RAM pack and, and then you had the 512k RAM pack which just fit in the expansion slot. But then when you also had the EPROM expansion slot, you had this thing st- sticking out. It became out a log. Like, yes. yes. I remember uh, that. And uh, and I had this EEPROM set up where I could burn four EEPROMs but 64k each or something like that and, and plug them in if I remember correctly so I had like, I had my games I had my assembler I had my editor all on EEPROM and uh, so they were all there but I didn't ever do anything interesting I had my Pac-Man game I broke I had a side scroller which was oh. I'm afraid we have a, a tractor coming through, so we may have to wait a little bit. Just to show you where we are. Okay, well, we're waiting for the safari trip, so, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, back to Pac-Man game. Yeah. yeah, no, the Pac-Man game was actually fairly simple. The... I wrote this graphics library, and that was what all my games were really about. It was never about the game, because my gameplay always sucked. But I had this graphics library for doing flicker-free sprites. Right. Because all my friends had Commodore 64s, which had sprites and hardware. Yeah. And I was envious as hell, even though I had more pixels to play with, if I remember correctly. The QL so was a nicer machine, I thought. Much nicer. I mean, the, it, it had a 32-bit CPU, even though it only had the 8-bit. The problem was, with the 8-bit interface, yeah. um, all memory accesses were incredibly slow. This is true. And, and with the big uh, pixel-addressable screen, that slowed things down even more. So doing good flicker-free graphics was actually something fairly hard. Um, did, did you ever use C on it? No. No, I never started doing any C programming, so I did everything in assembly language. Ah. And my own assembler didn't, didn't even do macros, really. So, I mean, uh, it, was, it was pretty ugly. Uh, but it was better than doing it in, in machine yeah. code and, and doing the numbers lookup, which just would have been too painful. So I, I just played around with it. I did silly tools. I found some bugs in the OS... 
was one in particular where one of the registers wasn't saved. Yes. And uh, things yes, like that. Yes, I remember that. And, yes. and it was... It was annoying, but it certainly taught me about. Cause the trap, cause the trap calls to uh, corrupt when you came back, yeah. as I recall. Yeah, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I found that by basically reading the listing because something didn't work the way it was yeah. supposed to work. That was a great machine because it actually had the entire OS you listed get, as assembler yes. with comments. You could now get, that was that, that, that's that, a that real machine. A lot. Yes. <laughs> no, but it was Sorry. also it, you. You had to play all these insane tricks. For example, you could. No. Um, the microdrives were horrible. Oh, and they yes, were so yes, speed yes, yes. critical that you could not take the OS code and uh, make your modifications and try to write to the microdrives because it, now when you ran in RAM, it was too slow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that was another. I got a floppy driver, so now my log was really. Uh, I mean, it was yeah. three feet long. It was flaky as hell. I, had, I did my own power supply for it because the standard power supply, it, I don't know yeah. what it did. It browned out. It was too weak. Yeah. So the machine would crash. And it took me a while to figure out that, okay. So you never got the massive 20 megabyte hard drive? I never got the hard drive. Uh, I got the floppy drive. An amateur QL programmer. Then. <laughs> sorry. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid. So. I'm sorry. But yeah, I, I it love really that machine. It was pretty horrible ordering everything from England, hoping you got under like 50 pounds because otherwise you had to pay taxes on it. And yeah. It, wouldn't, it was just painful. So, so did you end up... Um, paying your money and waiting for the machine to be released like I did. I ended up having to wait six months before no, they, they no, first shipped we, it. I, I wanted to. Actually, the machine I really wanted to buy was the uh, Acorn Arm. Uh, oh, uh, the Archimedes? Arm. Archimedes. Ah, That's the one yes. I was initially looking for. And it never really arrived in Finland. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, then when the QL actually got, you could buy it in a store in Finland, I just said, okay. Christmas yeah. money, begging from my <laughs> grandfather kind of thing. And, and so, I, so do you remember all of those old English computers, the Acorn Atom, the BBC Micro? I the never, no, Jupiter they, they Ace, never made it to... Really? The, oh. the Jupiter Ace, was that the fourth? That was the fourth one? base one. That A one mass market thin, computer yes, based on four. Yes, I, I never used it, but uh, I saw it in computer stores, and that must be like early 80s. That must have been... Yeah. Like Whatever were they thinking? <laughs> I don't know. No, but I, I had I had the Commodore Vic Twenty. I had mm. a friend who had a first a, a Sinclair Z eighty and then a Z eighty one. Yeah, yeah. And I just I, he was they a were loser. horrible. I mean, that was clearly I had I had the better machine. You had to much, put you had to put a beer on the ramp pack just to keep it cool enough to work, as I recall. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> I might have been too young to have oh. figured out beer on a ramp pack. Thing. Yeah. Uh, that was a common trick in, in yeah. Britain. Sorry. Um, yeah. so, so the Sinclair QL, I had a friend who had a Sinclair, whatever, the previous one was the Spectrum. Yes. Uh, I think he had a Spectrum 48. And uh, That was nasty. You couldn't type on those things. It was just nasty. It was nasty, and I tried to learn enough. I, I was interested in maybe getting it. This was obviously before the QL maybe getting one so I was looking into the whole Z80 assembly language and having grown up with the Commodore and the 6502 the Z80 was just horrible yeah the Z80 was 16 ugly 16 bit yeah 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 just horrible yeah. crap 6502 was much nicer than that yes and yeah. the 6502 you could actually program in an assembly not even assembly but a machine code which was what yeah. I used to do I would literally do the numbers calculate the jump offsets on paper and yeah. write it down that way. So I well, never had an assembler. So that was one of the reasons I wrote my assembler for the 68K. Yeah. Because I tried to do machine code and realized, okay, this is this is not as easy as it was on the yeah. 6502. So that was it's a beautiful, beautiful chip now. I mean, incredibly easy to program. I remember I, I got myself um, a, a standard C library by actually, um, I, I bought a C compiler but they didn't come with source of the C library. But the assembler was so orthogonal, you could read the assembly language and write it directly back into C. 
And that was that was how I learned how one a, a C library I, first worked. Yeah, and one of the things I liked about the 6502 was, so I compared it to my friend who had a 4 megahertz spectrum. Yeah. And my 6502 at 1 megahertz was actually faster than yeah. C80. Uh, well, I mean, they, they, they programmed the Terminator in 6502. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Right. What a flexible chip, yeah. Okay, <laughs> geek time with. So, sorry. <laughs> so, so do you think yeah. things would have been different had you got an Acon Archimedes? No, I suspect I'd been up the same shit creek with no paddle, and I thinking to this machine doesn't this work. Myself and I have to use. Yeah. I have to end up working on a PC, which yeah, which was works. a horrible, horrible piece of hardware. I don't. I don't think people understand. How awful uh, the IBM PC was. I mean, my. Well, the thing is. I always felt it was like a tank rolling over I, the industry that I destroyed it. I understood everything. very well how horrible it was, but after having been introduced to QL, it, there's, there's uh, a lot to be said for standard hardware, standard software, and what really decided me was the 386 came out, and it yeah. was clear that the 386 was actually uh, better and more interesting than the competition by. Uh, Big amount. So I never actually got into a PC before the 386, and I never even considered the old AT and even days. even the old 68020 machines or the 68030s, which were the first with the MMU. Um, the 68020 had an MMU. In fact, you could no, I, you could do it on a 6810 by pairing two uh, yeah, yeah, up yeah. and doing magic yeah, yeah, tricks ugly because things. the yeah. faulting didn't work right. I, th- I thought there was something wasn't wasn't there something missing on the 20? I, I don't remember. There what. might have been something else missing. On yeah, because the, the 30 was the the first one that was the was equivalent usable. of the 8038. Um, well, I mean, maybe the 6830 was an okay machine from an architecture standpoint, but they were hard to find and they were too expensive and they were too slow. So it was like. The 386 was always faster. Yeah, well, there, there was no easier. standard machine, as I recall. There was no standard machine that you could buy. Yeah. Anyway, it looks like our safari is here. Um, so, thank you very much, Linus Torvalds, for geek time on the Sinclair QL. And uh, we'll get to the Linux and Wolfie stuff another time. So, thanks a lot, Linus. Bye. Bye.